Hello, this is Monsignor Frank Chido, and I welcome you to the, the uh, heart's journey. I'd like to begin with a, an excerpt from Psalm 103. Merciful and gracious is the Lord, slow to anger and abounding in kindness. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so surpassing is his kindness to those who fear him. Merciful and gracious is the Lord. Now that's uh, something that we should be meditating on, not just during Lent, but really every single day because God's mercy is abundantly available to us, but the problem is not with God or his generosity. The problem is with us. We don't accept or recognize or open our hearts and minds to the mercy that God offers us. There are so many illustrations uh, of God's mercy that I could talk about, and I'm going to be talking about several of them in the days ahead. I call them snapshots of divine mercy. They are illustrations or images of people who uh, have embraced God's mercy and has transformed their lives, or they themselves, having received God, God's mercy, has passed it on to someone else. Both are very important, actually. Receiving God's mercy and then passing it on. Someone once said uh, that there's a, a ABCs of divine mercy. Accept God's mercy, be merciful, and C, have confidence and trust that God is always there for us in his abundant mercies. When I think of God's mercies, I think of one particular story, and I'd like to share that with you. It's a story that uh, takes place during World War II. Auschwitz concentration camp was one of the most deadliest places in the world at that time. It was at Auschwitz that several million human beings were incinerated or put to death uh, with excessive labor there at Auschwitz in Poland. The commandant at that time was a man by the name of Rudolf Haas, H-O-S-S. -S. Rudolf Haas uh, was a wretched man who had uh, no appreciation, apparently, for God's mercy since he exterminated so many innocent people, seemingly without regret. The story uh, begins during World War II when Rudolf Haas ordered the uh, abduction or arrest of a group of Jesuit priests and brothers in Krakow, Poland. And so one afternoon, unexpectedly, a group of Nazis came, the Gestapo, I believe, arrested the priests and brothers and took them to Auschwitz concentration camp where they were interred. The head of the house, the head of the Jesuit community there had not been present during the afternoon when the priests and brothers were rounded up. When he returned, he discovered his entire community had been, had been arrested. He didn't know what to do for a moment, but he thought to himself that he would join them. And so he, interesting enough, uh, broke into Auschwitz concentration camp. And there he tried to join his brothers, and of course he was arrested by the Nazi guards and taken to the commandant, Rudolf Haas. Rudolf Haas looked at the priest for a moment, and much to the surprise uh, of the guards, Rudolf Haas simply looked at the priest and said, you must go. And so the priest, to his shock, left the concentration camp. At the end of the war, Rudolf Haas was uh, arrested by the Allies. He was uh, put on trial and convicted of war crimes, and the sentence was to be uh, death. And the location of the death? Auschwitz concentration camp, where he himself had put to death so many million of innocent people. He was uh, to be interred there for several weeks prior to his execution. And during that time, uh, he was guarded by a group of Polish guards. Now, the Polish guards were related to many of the people who had been exterminated in that concentration camp. Some of their own wives, parents, children had been exterminated during the war there at Auschwitz. And so they had every reason to despise Rudolf Haas. Rudolf Haas knew he was going to be executed but what he feared more than the execution was being tortured by the Polish guards, figuring that since he had been so merciless to the Poles, the Polish guards would have retribution and make him suffer. To his shock and to his surprise, Rudolf Haas received only mercy and kindness at the hands of the Polish guards. Being so overwhelmed with the sign of mercy from those guards, knowing that he did not deserve it, he began to have a change of heart. Now, Rudolf Haas had been born and raised as a Catholic, and of course he abandoned his Catholic faith 
when he became a member of the Nazi party. But having seen mercy implemented and incarnated and so beautifully exemplified by those guards, he had a conversion of heart and he asked to go to confession. The Polish guards put out a call to any priest in the area to come and to hear Rudolf Haas's confession. Then Rudolf Haas remembered the priest that he had been merciful to and had let go when he was arrested some years before. His name was Father Vladislaw Lohn, L-O-H-N. He sent the guards into the town to find Father Vladislaw Lohn, and they found him and asked him if he would come and hear the confession of the man who set him free. He agreed. He came and heard the confession of that man. The guards said it was a, a beautiful sight. They said from a distance they could see uh, Ladislaw Lone hearing the confession of this animal, the man crying tears profusely. After the confession, uh, Father Lone said that he had said to the man, you, Rudolf Haas, you wretched animal, you have lowered yourself below even the worst of all animals and executing innocent people. And yet, God's mercy is available for you as well. Your sins are forgiven. Go in peace. The next day, Rudolf Haas received Holy Communion for the first time in many years. The guards said as they watched this man receive communion, he was like a small child receiving his first communion. Tears were even welling up in the eyes of those who witnessed it. Shortly thereafter, Rudolf Haas was executed, but he had experienced the profound mercy of God. He himself, for some strange reason, was merciful to Father Vladislaw alone and letting him go, and that mercy came back to bless him because Father Vladislaw alone was the only priest to hear his confession. And so mercy came back to bless him, and through the ministry of those Polish guards, his heart was converted and his soul was saved. It's a beautiful story of God's mercy manifest through uh, surprising people. First of all, the mercy through Rudolf Haas, who let the priest go, surprises. Surprised, too, in that the Polish guards were merciful. Surprised that that priest came and heard his, his last confession and gave him his first communion. Mercy was manifest that day. Someone once said that mercy is the love of God that we know we do not deserve. The mercy of God is the love of God we know we do not deserve. He knew he did not deserve the mercies of God, and yet his heart was turned, and he came to kneel before a God whom he knew loved even him in spite of his wretchedness. He was lifted up and set free that day. That is a beautiful snapshot of God's mercy. Merciful and gracious is the Lord, slow to anger and abounding in kindness. God bless you.